I'm going to illustrate this case of superposition inside your head. Literally, we're going to be inside your head creating simple harmonic motion. We're going to do that with a function generator that makes sinusoids at different frequencies. And we're going to send that signal to a speaker. And the speaker basically takes a sinusoidal voltage, creates a current in a little electromagnet, and there's a permanent magnet nearby on a diaphragm that shakes, and it basically vibrates the air. So we have an oscillating uh, potential, oscillating current, oscillating magnetic field, and we create oscillating air. We create a pressure wave or a sound wave, which we will talk about later in the class when we get to waves. But this wave moves across the room, and it eventually gets to your ear. Right, and inside your ear somewhere is your eardrum, your little tympanic membrane. And this pressure wave makes your little eardrum oscillate back and forth. And your brain perceives that as sound. Now, this is what I tell in the on-campus class. In the online class, there's a little bit more stuff that happens in here. Things get converted by an ADC and restored and then replayed over YouTube, et cetera, et cetera. But it's the same idea. I am having this little function generator oscillate your tympanic membrane. So here we have simple harmonic motion. And this is where we're going to show you constructive and destructive interference. So we can start with the setup. So here it is. Here's the function generator. And I can turn it up. We're listening to about 175 hertz. And you can hear it because I have the positive and the negative coming out of the function generator and going into the speaker. So back here, it's positive and negative going in. So you can hear it. Everything's fine. Now here, I have a second speaker, OK? So what we're going to do is bring in another speaker with another cable receiving the same signal pretty much. And it's also going to make a wave. It's also going to end up in your ear. So we're basically oscillating your tympanic membrane with two sources. And its motion will be the superposition of the action of those two sources. So if I apply the potential difference, the oscillating potential in phase to these two, then the oscillation on your ear should be in phase. So I'm going to take this, which is also red and black, the same polarity. And if I plug it in where red is on red, black is on black, these are receiving the same phase, the same sinusoid. These things will be in phase, delta phi equals 0, phi 1 equals phi 2. And we should see an increase in the amplitude. So let's see, plug it in. Sure enough, it's louder. So your tympanic membrane is now oscillating at twice the amplitude as it is now. Right? So there's one amplitude. There's twice the amplitude. Okay. Now, what if I put them out of phase? Right? To do them out of phase, all I have to do is flip this over. Right? Now, the polarity is the opposite. So the two sinusoids going to the two speakers will be out of phase. And if I plug it in out of phase, you get nothing. The sound is gone. The sound is still there. These diaphragms are still oscillating just as big as they were. They're still making two waves, but the waves are out of phase. The waves are, oscillate, are vibrating your tympanic membrane out of phase. Or you can think of the waves as canceling. But the way we're thinking of it now is they are still moving. If I were to look, I can feel these with my finger. They're still moving. But the sound is gone because, basically, it's being canceled out because they're out of phase. So in phase, nice and loud. Out of phase, sound is gone. So there you can see it inside your own head. 